Good morning! Nine reasons why you may not be breaking 90. The first one is you never warm up. So you come to the first tee, couple of swings, tee it up, and the big slice. Now we need another golf ball. We're deep in the muck, we're out of bounds. And sure enough, the second one goes a bit better. But we've already wasted two shots. And because we're a bit shook up about wasting two shots straight away, the iron shot is poor. And then the number just keeps going up and up and up. Can't see the bottom of the flag. The chances of getting this the right length are rather slim. Is this a familiar start to your round of golf? Perhaps if you put a little bit of effort before you got to the first tee, you wouldn't be starting with a seven. This hole is a dog leg right to left. 75% of the world swing out to in with an open club face. So why on earth have you just tried to manufacture a draw, a shot you just can't play? So on dog legs that really don't suit you, just take a lofted club. That'll get you to the dog leg. Play your shape. You have three wood with a little fade is so much better than trying to manufacture a hook off a slice of swing. Well, let me play the hole properly for you. I don't need my driver and I certainly don't need to hit a draw even though it is right to left. As long as I get over that mound, I'm running down there. And with loft in my hand, the chances of me actually finding this fairway are far greater than trying to manufacture a draw when you can't hit a draw. Ball below my feet, aim left. So it's much easier to play your shot shape on a dog leg than it is to try and get it round the wrong dog leg. But if the shape suits you, have a try. But if it doesn't suit you, then you really shouldn't be trying. Reason number three, and it's not this shot here, this shot's quite simple. Lofting the 9-iron just over the corner of these low trees is not a problem. Reason number three is not marking your ball, not lining it up, and just rushing, which inevitably leads to throwing away a shot. You're playing with two or three mates. Mark this up, walk away, have a think about it. At least have a look at the line. But no, you just want to finish. And inevitably, you miss. And the score's going up yet again. So now we go to the next tee. We've got no discipline. Reason number four. Trying to force the score. So forget the iron. Forget the hybrid, out with the driver, and we're in the water, and we're taking a drop. But it doesn't end there. We can see the flag. We've just got a wedge. I can get this up and down. We can keep our score going, and the pressure's too great. You know, you're putting yourself under so much pressure 
with that driver and then try to take on a flag and the head's gone all you want to do is get off the hole, sell your clubs, quit golf, the inevitable miss. Oh dear. And another. It's time to go home. Now chipping. Chipping with loft. Trying to hit one of those pro skidders up the green with your lob wedge. A shot that you need to practice 5,000 times. Let's try something with a little less loft. A pitching wedge, we can do this. But there's a bit too much backspin on that. We're on the green. We're off again. Not quite Pinehurst style. So ignore the difficult shots with loft and spin. Try something a little easier. So here's a 7-iron. And it's so much easier with these clubs because it's like a long putt. We're more familiar with what we've got to do. Here's a 5-iron. The 7-iron I put to 3 feet. The 5-iron about 6.5. So much easier than trying to use loft and spin it like the pros. Flag doesn't even look like it's on the green. The correct shot is out to the left. Have a chip up the green from short. But we're determined to get a par. And we hit a bullet from out the rough. We're up on the bank. We're screwed. We're downhill. It's fast. And inevitably, we duff it, and we don't get on the green. So this is reason six, not being able to put yourself in a position to chip up a green, because you're chasing your score still. After so many bad holes, you need that par. And now you're putting downhill. Why didn't I just play for the front left of the green and then everything would be uphill and so much easier. Number seven, taking on dangerous shots. I'm just hitting an eight iron for the front. I've got loft in my hand. Chances of success are high. Now I'm going to go for the back flag. I'm going to take on this incredibly difficult shot for a high handicapper and inevitably we miss the green. Now we didn't lose it this time. We got lucky but we've probably got the worst chip that we've got to play. Coming up, it's incredibly difficult. Now where's my A time finished? Oh wow. Oh, thanks Mr. Camera. But from here I can chip to any part of this green, including the back shelf. This green is uh, 13 yards wide. So playing just short of it here, I can chip to any flag on this green. If it's down the front here, I might use my sand wedge. If it's in the middle wedge, I've just used a 9-9 to get up there on the back shelf. I can certainly get a damn sight closer than somebody who's just missed the green left and right. Especially as down there, there's also lost ball. So there's a huge value sometimes in a green like this that is so narrow. Especially if you've got a shot. Just coming up to the front edge. Because you're teeing off with more loft, you're more likely to succeed. Reason number eight. Long iron from the heavy rough and the inevitable duff that that brings. You know, if I was to ask any of you how good you are with a sand wedge, 
gap wedge, pitching wedge 99, I'm sure you would tell me that you would hit the green with it. So why from 232 yards in a crap lie in the rough are you trying to get as close as you possibly can to the green? This is a 8 or a 99 lie and then we'll wedge it on or 99 it on. Let's see. So instead of trying to get as close as we can from an impossible situation, let's do it properly. A 9 iron. And don't forget, this is stroke index 1. There's only the pro in the pro shop who doesn't get a shot. So get it on the fairway. Another short iron, which is quite a reliable club. And we're on the dance floor. Who knows, if you're a 19 handicap or above, you've got two shots here. By playing the short iron twice, you actually had a par putt for a net two. You know what's funny is, as I say, people will claim they're good with their wedges, but then not trust them, not use them. You know, I've, so many times I've seen somebody over 200 yards out, they're in the rough, two inches, two and a half inches of wet rough with a long iron, and they duff it 10 yards. And they've got 10 yards closer. And they duff it again 10 yards. And now they're under pressure. They really must use the long iron now because they, their score is disappearing and they get it another 10 or 15 yards. You can play an entire par five in the rough and make an eight when if you're taking the short iron to get out of it, to get on the fairway where you can play your next shot, boy, doesn't that make a difference. Trust your short irons. You keep telling me you're good at them. Reason number nine, and the final one. And I bet this is going to apply to an awful lot of people. This tee box is very wide. Yeah, according to the uh, the wear mark there of people's feet, people are just teeing up in the middle. They're not thinking about what they are doing or the hole they're playing. This hole slopes uh, the fairway slopes left to right. It's a dog leg left to right. So I don't want to be right. I'm going to be blocked out at best and perhaps even lost ball at worst. When I tee up there, all I'm looking at is the right side of the fairway and the trees down the right. So you've got to think about what you're doing. You can use all of this tee box. So use the part of the tee box that's going to create the angles for your shot shape and the angles for the shape of the hole or just even if it's a straight hole, the lie of the land, whichever way it slopes. Create angles. Don't just stick it in the middle and thinking. Really, you'd do a whole lot better using the full width of the tee box. Now if this was high on the right, if this fairway was high on the right and low on the left, I might just tee up on the left over here swing out there and hit into it but because it's left to right I feel I need to tee up it over here and hit into it use your brain don't just go autopilot middle of the tee box I mean that wear mark where everyone's feet has been do they all hit a draw oh no they can't do 75% of the world comes over the top and slices well, this is more like it. I can't even see the right side of the fairway from here. But I can certainly look down the left side where I want to go. Here's my routine, practice swing, stand behind the ball. You'd be surprised how many people never stand behind the ball and aim at where they want to go. The reason nine is using the tee box and actually aiming. Not many people do.
What a huge difference. I'm looking down the left. I'm looking at the highest part of the fairway. And I'm going to use that to roll the ball back to the middle. If I tee up just in the middle of the tee, I'm looking at where I don't want to go. Here, I'm looking at where I do want to go. Now I'm on the other side of the box, because now I see the shot as being a draw. So I'm going to draw it into that slope. And because I'm a good golfer, or I'm the other 25% who can actually hit a draw, I can even stand outside the box to do it. So use the width of the tee box to set up the hole for you. You'll do a hell of a lot better than just, here's the wear mark. I mean, that's just somebody who is not thinking at all. Well, we've done the first part. Now the flag is on the right side of the green behind the bunker and I want nothing to do with that. With a ball below my feet. It's going to turn left to right. So we let it. Although I did probably aim a fraction too far left there or started the ball too far left chip it up under the hole, make the par. And that is all set up by using the full width of the tee box to suit my shot shape and the shape of the hole and the lie of the land. One of the hardest things I've had today is to try and hit bad shots. And some of them, I just didn't quite hit them badly enough. Cheerio. Reason number five, not chipping out from the trees, but actually trying to get as close to the green as possible. So we're gonna try and fire it through that little gap. Oh crap, that's just gone straight through the middle and way down the fairway. Let's try that again. I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the damn tree. Let's hit the damn tree for the camera. So reason five, not chipping out, but being too greedy. Here we go. Oh god, that's gone straight through the tree and way down the fairway as well. How can you miss a tree twice? Bugger. Right, six iron up the green. I need to slice this. I need to lose it on the right. Oh, damn it, I pured it. It's right in the middle of the green. I have to try another ball and slice that. Right, snap hook required. Job done. Now all I've got to do is talk about it and not muff up my words. This holds a dog leg right. Not only that, but the ground goes left to right. So everything's gonna go right. Now, shit. <laughs>